In the days it was left, but it was very few. So I called around, like, like those organizations that help you find a new home. And I also called, like, the, uh, the person that helped, that had, like, one of the litters of the dogs. And she had a contact. So she was like, oh, I know someone that maybe wants to take them. And so I called her. And it seemed like the spirit was just putting us together because when she called me and told me that I have the brother of one of the dogs. And when she came to the litter, she was attracted to Shanti, which was my dog. And I was attracted to her dog. So it's so funny here she's calling and says that she would like to have the dogs. And both of the dogs too. So I was just like, okay, it's a spirit working and it goes so fast. So I just, okay, that's beautiful. So I left the two dogs to a person that I've never met. But I just felt so comfortable that, that okay, the spirit is, is showing me her the way. So it was so beautiful. They got to this home, which they're totally taken care of. They can sleep in their bed. They get like, the food that they love. They get to run every day. They're like really fast dogs, 60 kilometers an hour. So they get to run every day, like three dogs together. And so it's just so beautiful. Exactly. And then it's like dogs all over the place. When we're going to the tours, of course, I can't leave any dogs because they come back, you know. <laughs> it seems to be in different forms of different, you know, different shapes or whatever, but it's like the same. So that's the beauty of that. Of course, they go on to scream in the beginning and just say that things are sacrificed, but when we actually take the steps, it always comes back to us in a way that we recognize so we don't feel the lack anymore. And that's what everything. Oh yes, yeah, I sold the apartment, I sold that one, and the cabin went after that too, so it was all, and the things, like, I was giving away, like, all of my, like, furniture, and, like, yeah, not all at that time, but it was coming later, so it was, like, all the things they were going to, yeah. Yeah, the journey is so deep that you know there have been people like Tolstoy and throughout the centuries that have just tried to give away all their possessions, thinking, oh, God will just come to, come down and tell me which mountain to go to, and you know, oh great, I sold my apartment now. Where do I ascend? Uh, just go over here. And this journey is so so deep. It's like it's the actual concept of possessions. The actual belief in possessions that has to be released. It's not, we can't just go through the motions and form and think that God's going to go, oh, very good, very good, you sold your apartment, now you can come back to heaven. Uh, you know, the ego is, is, is the belief in possession. You know, like in Corinthians it said, love does not possess. Uh, and possession is, is the ego's version of love in this world, certainly, uh, with relationships and children and on and on and on. So, I think what that was was just like a willingness to start opening up and following and uh, there actually we could say that in the story uh, when she was going through much another round of deeper training that she actually bought another <laughs> apartment and she actually bought another cabin and she had to go through a lot of lessons in loosening from those in fact I think we could say that there's still the apartment she went through over the past winter a whole kind of series of lessons around buying a very fancy tub and shower that seemed to leak and turned into the money pit and all the things that most people deal with when you're dealing with buying a, a property or whatever. Uh, Willow's, I'm sure, had a lot of adventures with her place out there. Most of us know that there's a lot to it. And it's not just simply a matter of selling something and thinking that's the way. It's really a matter of following the guidance and letting the Spirit show you through working with the symbols how to retranslate the symbols to a higher perspective where you can see them with the Holy Spirit instead of with the ego. Where all the attachments are, where all of the expectations and grievances come in. So, yeah, it was... Uh, uh, big step, I think, for Helena, and, and also, we did a bit of traveling, so it was actually the most loving thing that, that could be done in terms of with the dogs.
you know, finding them a very loving home. Because uh, this is not a journey of sacrifice. It's not like God is asking us to sacrifice anything. But it's a, the ego belief in sacrifice, which makes the letting go sometimes seem sacrificial from the ego's interpretation. So for me, it was, it's been very much an inward journey. Um, it's not really about changing your diet, or changing your, your wardrobe, or changing your location, or changing your job, and partners, and so on and so forth. Those can be aspects of the awakening. We certainly can be guided to do any or all of those things, but it's, it's some, there's nothing special about rearranging the form and coming up with another configuration. Uh, the Spirit wants us to literally uh, be so in the flow of guidance that that everything that we think and say and do is inspired and therefore the Holy Spirit can use any of the symbols of the world. You start to realize that there really aren't good and bad symbols. You know, they're just symbols. With the mind training as you go much deeper with it. And uh, so people I've worked with, which have been many thousands, and I've worked with people in many different countries and different languages, um, we really work at at getting in touch with what's going on in your consciousness, really getting in touch with the feelings, getting in touch with the thoughts that you're thinking and, and what you believe. And when people will say to me, you know, I've got a global mailing list where people write in all kinds of questions, sometimes they do get into this, like they want you to answer all their questions and tell them what to do. You know, should I get divorced from this person? Should I get married to this one? Should I leave this job? I'm really not into like playing fortune teller uh, and telling people the future or telling people what to do, just working with them on their thoughts and their beliefs that they're holding on to. I did have a question. I, I read one of the first words the other day, and I thought I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about that. And I was going to ask you about uh, one of them is called Healing in Mind, which is taken from my global mailing list, where people would pour out their questions, sometimes in great detail, you know, exactly what their precise situation is. Or they'll have questions about the teachings of the Course. Can you explain this? Can you give me examples? Can you give me metaphors? How does this apply in your own life? They want, you know, a lot to really start to get a better grasp, because sometimes it's just some of the teachings just are not comprehensible. So actually it's it's quite common. It's also quite common with the Course is that I meet people all over the world that sometimes they'll hear about it, maybe from something they've read from Marion Williamson or Eckhart Tolle or, you know, just Wayne Dyer. I mean, there's many different people that have been touched and used the Course and have used it in their journey. And so they'll find out about it and sometimes they'll They'll even get it into their house, that's the next step, and it can sometimes sit in their house for days or weeks or years. They use it as a doorstop, they use it as a plant stand. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things that it's so direct and it's so deep that, that the, you have to really, really be ready for it. Even if you're willing, if you're willing and eager like a puppy dog, and your tail's gone, and, you know, like, okay, give it to me, and you open it up, if your mind's not just at that right place of readiness for it, it can seem like pig Latin or gibberish. It doesn't matter how many years of education you even have. Uh, there are people that have two PhDs that will say, it's like pig Latin. I don't, I don't get it. So it's, it has a lot to do with readiness and not so much to do with, with intellectual capacity or a lot of the things that seem very important in this world.